So I have been considering making a change to the way that I work with vocals in Studio One. Uh, more specifically, I guess this really comes into play when you talk about working with uh, recording takes to layers, where you end up with something like this as your end result. So takes to layers is, is uh, it's an interesting thing. I mean, some people love it and their expectation is to work that way all the time. Other people just want to move forward and get a vocal done and they want to punch in and they want to do it on the fly as they go and commit to things. Me personally, I would much prefer to just get a vocal done and get the best performance we can and do punch-ins where needed. But this isn't always the case. Now, in this particular case, the artist opted to use takes to layers. And this is just what she asked for. That's how she wanted to record it. And it can be a really great thing. It can get an artist in, in, the, in the pocket, in the vibe of something. But notice in this case, for verse two, we ended up using layer one, or rather take one, the whole entire take from beginning to end was the best of everything. And that's one continuous take all the way through. And then we just did a little bit of melody on top of that. But when we talk about this type of workflow, we end up having lots of different layers. We have lots of different edits. You could have Melodyne in those edits. You could have Revoice Pro. You could have Vocaline. Lots of different things. So one thing that I used to do when I worked in Pro Tools is any time that I was working and I was using Melodyne, for example, if I was happy with something, I would immediately want to basically print that or render that to a brand new track. And then I would leave the original there as kind of like a backup. So if I needed to do any edits or I wanted to change the comp around, I always had that. So let's take a look at that same approach. So let's say that I wanted to call this one, uh, let's just call it lead vocal, all capitals, just for sake of demonstration. So when we have this, let's say that I wanted to basically copy all of these events and basically just drag them down into this new track. So let's go ahead and do that. We've done this first set of events for verse one. Now it's copying all of the events over. Notice that we have Melodyne and it's a copy of the same Melodyne instance. Also notice that if I expand the layers, we have all of our layers. Now this isn't exactly my intent in terms of what I want to do. And when we drag and drop audio events from one track to another, by default, this is what happens. But let's say that I don't want that to happen. I just wanna basically copy all the events. I don't need the layers. I just want one main layer and I don't need any of the other options because my plan is that I basically want to just highlight this and merge it or bounce it. And I want to basically render all my Melodyne changes into the audio print or audio region itself. So in that case, we have the ability to deselect one preference, which will completely change the way that Studio One handles this task. So by default, anytime you create an audio track in Studio One, the layers follow events is activated. So we know what this means. It's that if we basically move things around that the all of the different layers between the events will move along with it. So if you deselect this option before you do your alt or option drag, take a look at what happens. I've just dragged these over. It's copying each one over. But notice that now if I right click, we don't have any layers. Now, in terms of the tracks, we still have the layer icon because there's take content. There's different content that's available. So, for example, if I wanted to change this even down the road, I could switch to take two if I wanted to. But that's not what I want to do. Let's say that I wanted to basically just commit to everything. So, in that case, I'm just going to highlight across everything here. And with all of these selected, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm dragging everything down to a brand new track but it doesn't have layers and I'm not having a congested session or anything like that. Now at this point, I could basically just come across here and if I was 100% happy with these results and committed, I could just bounce these. Now with snapping off, it'll basically bounce the audio events as is and if it's on, it'll basically quantize it to bar boundaries. But let's say that I wanted to just commit to this. Now maybe I wanted to do some clip gain or something like that. I'm just now dragging across here and I'm gonna highlight all these events and I'm creating a brand new um, contiguous audio event for each one of these. So now we have a brand new audio event, all of our Melodyne and everything is rendered in. Now keep in mind, this was the event, so the event effects will be rendered, but if we wanted our channel strip settings, well this is easy to do now in Studio One, as of uh, whatever version we got this, we can right click, we can copy the channel settings, and then we can right click and we can paste the channel settings. 
So in terms of having all of my sends and everything like that and having those be activated and not having to worry about those things not coming across properly, we're good. So in this case now, with the original, at this point, I could basically just disable this track and then I could also hide it. And then I have a backup and the backup will always be available to me. And it's available if we go to this track over here, we know that directly above here, we could bring that into view if we ever needed to get back to the original. But this to me is a nice and neat and tidy way to work. And the big benefit here is that if I do want to do any clip gain to further adjust things, that this is something that I could do. If I wanted to manually DS this performance, it's very easy to be able to see S's and breaths and stuff like that. Then I could come across here and I could do my manual DSing everything that I would want just by using the clip gain. So this one over here, I could say, okay, I want to bring that down a little bit and move through and adjust my breaths and this one over here. And this for me is a much easier workflow, even though I'm losing a bit of the ability to kind of like have that state of always being able to go back to the original. Sometimes I don't want to go back to the original. And what happens if I lose one of the plugins or I have a different version of Melodyne or I move to a new computer or something like that? This just allows me to basically render my results and have the exact same settings. So where this is going to sit in the mix is going to be the exact same. And I don't have a track that has potentially seven or eight layers because after I'm done, I might never use any of those layers again. Once we've committed to the comp, that might be perfectly fine. And it's really easy to do, right? Just bring in a new track, deselect this preference, and then it's just a matter of alter option, dragging these down. This will give you the new file over here. Once we have this, I can then at this point, render this into a new result. Should have named it first, because instead of being track 63. And then last but not least, we can just basically select this, Command C or Control C and then Command V. And we're getting the exact same channel settings in terms of our fader level, our pan, any sends and any plugins that we have. And then once this is no longer needed, boom, just gonna get rid of that. Anyways, thought that might be useful for some people who like to have the ability to continuously go back and have access to your Melodyne and everything like that. Might not be for you, but for those who just like to commit and move forward, this is a way that you can basically copy events or move events to a new track, but without having all of the associated layers with it. Anyways, that's it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.